When you're working in Excel, always keep in mind that what you see is not always what you get. This backward saying applies in a couple of ways. First, if I type some words that extend beyond the width of a cell, by default, they will be displayed as overlapping the neighboring cells. I know that I started typing in cell C5, but how can you tell that some words don't belong in these other cells, like D5, E5, F5, and G5? If I click on cell C5, I can see the actual contents of the cell in the formula bar. But if I click on cell D5, notice that the formula bar is empty. Remember, what you see is not always what you get. You see text overlapping cells D5, E5, F5, and even G5, but these words do not actually belong to these cells. I want to give you one more example of this idea, that in Excel what you see is not always what you get. Of course you can see three numbers here, 20, 80, and 100. If I click on the 20, you can see its value in the formula bar is 20. Same as when I click on the 80. But keep your eyes on the formula bar now while I click on the 100. We see 100 inside of the worksheet, but the formula bar tells me that the formula B3 plus C3 actually underlies the value of the cell. If we were to change the 80 to 30, Now we'll see 50 instead of 100. Working with formulas requires more background, so I'll cover using formulas and functions in more detail in a separate video. For now, we'll go back to basics. When I have text that extends beyond the right side of a cell, I can still write inside of the covered cells. If I do this, the original text will become hidden but it's still there. If I need to confirm what I've entered in a cell, I can always click on it and look at the formula bar. However, Many times, you don't want to obscure text you've written because it's more useful for it to be visible. To force text to appear within the confines of its cell, you can apply the wrap text command to the cell. Remember, this works before or after you've typed a value. Instead of allowing the text to overflow the cell, it will stay within the column and the height of the row will increase to allow it to display. You can resize the width of rows and the height of columns by placing your cursor over the border between two headings and clicking and dragging. Alternatively, you can resize rows and columns by first selecting it and then on the Home tab going to the Cells group and Format command, and choosing Row Height or Column Width. From there you can manually enter a number. I've made a cell fairly large for the next part of this demonstration, and I'll type the word Alignment inside of it. In Excel, you can control both the horizontal and vertical alignment of the contents of each cell. By default, text is bottom left aligned. I can combine the horizontal and vertical alignment commands to produce nine different outcomes.
sometimes you wish to indent the value of a cell, but you can't use the tab key because this will move to the next cell. To increase the amount of space between the value of a cell and its left border, select the cell and use the increase indent command. The decrease indent command will do the opposite. Frequently you will use Excel to work with numbers as values. By default, numbers are bottom right aligned. You can change the formatting of a number from general, which means no specific format, to currency, dates, time, and other common formats. Excel offers a high degree of customization for types of numbers, but that topic goes beyond the basics that I'll stick to right now. To change the format of a number, select the number and then use the drop down menu. In cell C2, I'll type September 26, 2020 in full, but when I press enter, it becomes formatted as a short date instead. To change this, I can select the cell and go to the drop down menu in the number group to choose the long date. Alternatively, I could have chosen more number formats and selected a style that was more similar to what I started with. When you're working with decimals, you can control how many decimal places appear. Again, I'm going to use a formula, even though we haven't covered formulas so far. In cell B3, I'm going to calculate 100 divided by 7. Numerous decimal places appear. After selecting the cell, I can control how much detail to show using the increase or decrease decimal commands. Even if I remove all of the decimal places, the true value exists within the cell. Don't forget, what you see in Excel is not always what you get. The ways to manipulate worksheet data that I've demonstrated in this video will help you organize text and numbers in many common situations, but I've only scratched the surface. Excel has many more features that can be useful depending on the context of your data.